Now this is gonna be a fun one. This is probably one of my top requested videos and I pulled my grandmother in for this one. Asking grandma or one of your grandparents, three of mine have passed, what is the best health advice? Like what should we pay attention to when it comes to aging, getting older? And without hesitation, she said, take care of your eyes and take care of your feet. There's some wisdom in there and it's, you know, your heart's important, your brain's important, don't get me wrong. Take care of your eyes, take care of your feet. And there are a lot of feet problems. This one is gonna get up close and personal with Dr. Living Good, but I will do anything to make sure you understand how to take care of these nine common foot problems. We're gonna move our way through them. If you don't have one, pay attention because I think the latter ones are gonna be super important for caring for them. I'm gonna actually show you the rehab exercises, why I have rubber bands sitting next to me and water bottles and my shoe is off. We're gonna to get to that. So nine problems, nine solutions. Number one, fungus is incredibly common. I get asked, I made an entire video on it. I put it in the description below. My two top favorites for any kind of fungus on the foot, number one is make yourself a baking soda paste, right? You mix some water with the baking soda, you, this resulting paste can be applied right to your nails, right to your feet and kind of caked to it. I always recommend these things at night, maybe when you're sitting around and you can just kick it over your feet and that is gonna help balance out with alkalinity. 10 to 20 minutes sitting there with it. The recipe is in that video that I shared in the description below. My second favorite for fungus is apple cider vinegar. Put parts of apple cider vinegar in water and soak your feet in it for 15 to 20 minutes at nighttime. Doesn't smell the greatest, but it's very good with the acid side of it to neutralize the fungus that might be on your feet. That's my top two. There are six others in that video. I put that whole thing in the description for you. So hold on, we still got eight more to go through here. Number two, athlete's foot along the fungus family. Main key here is you gotta get that thing dried out, okay? If you have that or if you have it, you know, in any crevice or crease in your body, an armpit or anywhere else, you gotta get it time to air out. Nighttime's the best time to do this. To take a proper shower, clean the proper area, um, soak it, scrub it, uh, and then just let it air out. Make sure in between the toes around um, that you do that. I would recommend changing shoes. I would recommend changing socks and really making sure that that is fresh new area. There's nothing old carrying over day to day that could reinfect that foot. Now, spraying silver on there, colloidal silver is a good idea, especially at nighttime. Get out of the shower after you clean it up. Spray it with colloidal silver spray. There's a link to that in the description below. It's easy spray to use. That is very antimicrobial, but doesn't have any side effects with it. And that will help to kill off any bacteria and or funguses that are in that area. My second favorite one for athlete's foot is cornmeal. Cornmeal. You put about an inch of cornmeal in a shallow container, one that you could fit your feet in or your foot in. Then you carefully put the foot in over the cornmeal and then take warm water and pour it over top until the foot or the part that is having the athlete's foot is covered and just let it sit. It's about an inch of warm water. Let it sit for about an hour and the cornmeal combined with the water it naturally will kind of happen and it isolates that fungus or that bacteria that is growing in those areas. Those are my favorites for it. Again, there's a video on athlete's foot and funguses that you can check out as well. But number three is blisters. We've all had them. How do we prevent the rubbing? Obviously new shoes or improper footwear, improper socks cause a lot of problems with this. You gotta critically think, is my sock bulked up there or not touching there? That's often what gets me in trouble is my sock has slid down just a little bit or I might have a hole in it, time to get rid of it. Um, remedies to put on there though, coconut oil is an excellent one. You could use that during the day to keep a little bit of lubrication in there. Anywhere where there's rubbing on your skin, in between the legs, in between an armpit, using a little coconut oil on there works wonders. It's anti-inflammatory as well. The other one for a soothing effect, maybe at nighttime, would be aloe vera. You could put aloe vera on there. It reduces inflammation. It also increases collagen production, stimulates cellular repair. So I really like just a good um, aloe vera for any kind of burn, any kind of rub, any kind of blister. It's a good idea. Now let's get into the demonstrations. Next up, bunions. They hurt, they're painful. I've had a lot of patients over the years with these, but the four things I'm gonna show you right here are excellent. Reducing bunions, keeping them away, helping you to avoid the gruesome surgery that comes with it. So what I would recommend for these, and hey, listen, you're about to see my feet, okay? Uh, I'm so I'm gonna turn the camera so you can do it. No feet, are any feet pretty? If your feet are pretty, God bless you. Mine aren't, but it's fine. And you know what, Barry? I got holes in my jeans too. Don't focus on my jeans, focus on the exercises so we can get you some help. Now let's go down here. Here's the feet. All right, now with these exercises, um, number one with bunions, okay? I left the sock on one, off on the other. The bunion, the toe is pointing in, it's going this direction. So you can buy toe spacers if you want to during the day to hold the toe open, okay? So that might be an option, number one. 
Number two is this tendon right along here. The adductor hallucis is going to be very tender. So you'll want to massage that thing. You can use your thumb to do it. Get in there, it's going to be really tender and you just want to massage that area, especially on the big toe joint and strip over the top of that tendon right there and work it a little bit, okay? You also want to stretch that tendon out. To do that, all you simply have to do is take the big toe and then go in towards your ankle. Take the big toe and go this way and you stretch it out. If you want to get a little downward pull, you can do that as well, but you want to stretch that out. That's probably going to be pretty tight for you if you have a bunion going on. Now, next, pull on this big toe. You're going to distract it outward. So I will turn my foot sideways to do this. You just grab a hold of the big toe, stretch it out. I like to go down with it and stretch it or grab just the end of the toe right here. And sometimes you'll hear a pop, and that is not a bad thing, right? Stretch that toe out right there. Give it a good pull. You'll feel that for sure. And then finally, for these rubber bands, okay? What you'll do is you'll take a rubber band, you'll take a hair tie, you'll connect it to both of your feet. Now, this is a skinny rubber band, so I'm gonna double it up, okay? And then just real simply, all you're gonna do is just pull those apart. So with your bunions, the toes are going to be going in already. You're just gonna use and pull your feet apart, keep your toes straight to pull the toes outward. They're gonna come this way. The big toe's gonna come this way while your feet move out. And just go through 10 of those and pull them apart. It's gonna help the inside to strengthen this area of the bunion. I always like to do some massaging in those areas too. These are gonna be real tender, but I like to work that area for it, it, it as well. That's kind of a bonus. All right, number five, okay, past bunions, very similar. Hammer toe, the toe curls up like this, okay? And you'll start rubbing in the top of your shoe. So you wanna be very aware of this. Um, for hammer toes to have shoes that don't curl upwards. See mine? See how they're very flat all the way through? A lot of shoes, for whatever reason, curl up like that. Make sure that yours don't because you're going to be putting more pressure. You're going to start wearing a hole in the top of your shoe because it's pushing up. So that hammer toe right there, two simple moves that you can do to help counteract it. Number one is going to be grabbing all of the toes and then stretching them downwards. When you do this, you're going to see the knuckles of the toes pop up. Okay, just stretch those toes out. Or you could use the floor to do it. So you push your toe against the floor and just stretch it out. You might get a little cramping in there. Okay, so you can go back the other direction a little bit if you want to and then go back into it. Stretch those out. Great exercise for the hammer toe. It needs to be done daily. Check your shoes. For both bunions, shoes too tight. Hammer toes, shoes too curled. This is what's created a lot of those problems. So check your shoes, make sure they're wide enough, make sure they're flat enough for you. Number six, calluses. And we probably probably have some, it's very normal, but if these get big enough, they turn into corns. And corns kind of have that you know core in the middle of it. I don't have one to show you, but those hurt. So what do we need to do with these? You can file these away slowly over time. And number one, I would look at your shoes to make sure they're wide enough, flat enough, so they're not creating these big corns on the side of the feet. But we can start soaking these. And so if you soak your feet in a warm bath with Epsom salt is what I recommend. Okay. After the soak, pat your feet dry. Okay. Dry them off. Then I would add some hydrating lotion or a coconut oil or a shea butter okay, to that area. Softens it so it's not painful and continue the softening process. And do this for several days, right? So rub that in, just soften it up. Then next night, soak them in Epsom salt again, dry them off, rub that in. So soften these over a bit. And then when it's not as painful, not as tender, then you can take, right, and start rubbing it. A pumice stone, okay, in between your toes. If you have a corn, you could use an emery board or you could use a nail file. And as long as it's not too painful, you can just start chipping away at that intense callus. All right. And you repeat these steps each night, just caring for your feet for a few weeks until the corn has disappeared. Number seven, you ready? Number seven, plantar fasciitis. So you're getting a lot of pain along the bottom of the foot all the way back into the heel. What do we do with this? I put an entire video for you to take care of these beauties um, when it comes to plantar fasciitis. In the description is a whole video going through this. The main exercise though that I use for it, uh, there are two of them that tie together with number eight, which is a heel spur, but you could lay a towel down or your sock. And what you will do is you'll crinkle that towel or that sock up 
so it's balled up under my foot, and then I'm gonna use my toes and flatten it back out. I actually like a towel better because there's, there's a bit more girth, there's a bit more to flatten and a bit more to pull, but your sock will work, and then just flatten it back out. You just sit there, you're watching your TV show, you're Netflixing it, you're Huluing it, whatever you're doing, and you're just working your foot. Now what you're gonna find happen is you might start getting a little cramping in there, you get some soreness right under the foot, this instep right here starts to feel it. You can even exaggerate and just try to focus on your big toe and strengthen that up. A lot of times there's such a weakness with the arch in the bottom of the feet. That's a good way to put that back in there. Now, also with plantar fasciitis or number eight, heel spurs, get yourself either a golf ball, a rolling pin, or, oh, look at there, the Dr. Living Good water bottle. It says I am the solution. So this is gonna be your solution for rolling it out. All right, that's gross. He's putting his foot on his water bottle. It's my foot, it's my water bottle. All right, so don't do it in someone else's water bottle. That wouldn't be okay, but you're gonna roll this over the top of it and you're stripping the bottom of your foot. And if you wanna get the heel, just let it rub right on the, ooh, that's tender, right? If you got heel spurts, it's gonna be tender. The more pressure you put down, the more you're gonna get and you just work that. So you're just at night and you're working on the outside and you're bringing your foot to the inside and you're flattening it out and you're working this area over. Don't use someone else's water bottle though, use your own. And number nine. Number nine are bad ankles. So I broke this guy, eighth grade state finals of a wrestling tournament and I rolled my ankle stem semifinals. The guy that ended up winning it, I beat the week earlier. I won the state title. All right, I'm done with that. But so then I have to take care of this thing every once in a while. So let's take care of the ankle. Best maneuver you can do for it while you're sitting watching TV, the ABCs. Imagine you're holding a pencil in between your big toe and your second toe and you're going to draw the ABCs. So A, B, C, D, <laughs> right? You're gonna draw them out and you're gonna feel that motion in your foot and it's gonna start to get fatigue. There are more exercises for bad ankles and plantar fasciitis in the description. So check those out. Those are below this video. Well, I think I'm done playing footsie with you. There's the steps. Now, grandma said, Number one, take care of these bad boys. Number two, she said to take care of your eyes. So I made an entire eye health training of all the different eye conditions you can think of. Walk through step-by-step step the exercises and how to deal with them. And it comes with a guide on how you can take care of these and take care of those. Thanks, Grandma. Check out that video. I put it right here for you.